Hi, um, my name is um, Professor Devaney. I'm a professor here at Bridgewater State University in the Department of Physics. So it's um, Ed Devaney. And my students just usually call me Dr. D. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lesson on quantum mechanics 101. So quantum mechanics 101. And hopefully, I can give you some basic ideas about what quantum mechanics is and why it's so, um, so kind of counterintuitive to what you would think. The basic idea of quantum mechanics is that everything, even particles, so let's imagine this is a baseball, can be represented by a wave. So it kind of has a wave. So this would be a particle-like description of a baseball. And this would be wave-like. If it's particle-like, it's governed by Newton's laws. And Newton's laws kind of look like this. The sum of the forces external equals mass times acceleration. And if it's wave-like, it's going to obey Schrodinger's equation. And Schrodinger's equation is essentially the wave equation for particles. And that looks like this, minus h bar squared over 2m del squared of psi. This is called the wave function of x and t. And that equals i h partial of psi of x and t. Well, I better make this a vector. To be truthful, that's a vector, comma t. So this is, um, this is the classical world that we're used to, and this is the world when things look like waves. So it's kind of funny to think about how a particle could even act like a wave. And so I'm going to try to give you an idea of, of how that comes across. The way it does is this thing called the de Broglie wavelength. What de Broglie said is that everything has a wavelength associated to it. So this is the wavelength, and the wavelength equals h over p, and p equals mass times velocity. The, um, the h on the top is called Planck's constant. And to set, give you a number, Planck's constant is about 10 to the minus 34. So that's an incredibly small number, and that's what sets the scale of quantum mechanics. Generally speaking, if we're talking about a baseball, with a, a kilogram mass and going at a, a regular velocity, the wavelength of the baseball is 10 to the minus 34, which means it's going to act particle-like. And that's what I'll try to show you right now. So I'm going to switch colors here. Here we go. Here's the scoop. If you're a person, and let's set your scale to be 1 meter, and the wavelength comes out to be 10 to the minus 34, that means that the wavelength looks like this. Where this is a wave, and here's your wavelength, and it's right in there, and this is about 10 to the minus 34 meters. All right, as opposed to the quantum mechanical world, where if you could get the wavelength of the object, one meter. If the wavelength looks like this, then you could imagine how would you experience this object? Well, if this object had a wavelength where the wavelength was roughly the order of u, the size of u, which we'll call d, then you can imagine if this wave hit you that you would ride up and down in the crests of this wave, and you could feel the wave coming and going. So what you would say there is, I felt the object, and it felt like a wave to me. Whereas if this wave, you shorten the wavelength, if this thing hits you, you're too big. So the wavelength is much, much smaller than d. And if you're much, much smaller than d, you don't feel, you don't ride up and down the crest. And instead, what you feel is like a wall hits you. So this is the particle-like, this is particle-like realm. And then this is the wave-like realm. And so basically the story of quantum mechanics is that everything has a wave. And it depends upon the size of you, the size of how you're measuring. 
that, that depicts whether or not you experience the object as a particle or a wave. Clearly with a baseball, it has a wavelength on the order of 10 to the minus 34. And if you're Chris Sale and you're picking up the baseball and you're, you're throwing gas at about 95 miles an hour, that baseball's wavelength is so much less than Chris Sale's that he experiences the baseball as a particle. However, if you're an atom, and in the atom, the, the scale of the atom is about 10 to the minus, if on the other hand you're an atom, and the size of the atom is about 10 to the minus 10 meters, and an electron has a de Broglie wavelength on 10 to the minus 11 meters. Whoop, I'm trying to erase there, so 10 to the minus 11 meters. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, oh, wait a minute. I kind of messed up here. <laughs> uh, let me erase that. About 10 to the minus 10 meters. This is about 10 to the minus 10 meters. Then the wavelength of the, the size of the atom is basically the size of the wavelength of the electron. So the atom feels the electron and it feels it more as a wave. So in this realm, what you would say is that if you wanted to do the physics of Chris Sales throwing a fastball, you would use Newtonian physics. But if you're an atom and you want to figure out the energy levels of electrons going around an atom, you could no longer use the particle-like description of the electron. You'd have to use the wave-like description of the electron, and you would have to use Schrodinger's equation. So that's the basic idea of quantum mechanics. Maybe I hope it made sense.